Part 4 of the Prince Alfred's Pass covers the section from the small settlement of De Flucht for 23 kilometers and ends at the forestry station at Buffel's Neck. There are some beautiful viewpoints along the section and you can stop at the Bain Memorial Park approximately halfway to Buffel's Neck. Buffel's Neck is the highest point along this section at an altitude of 683 meters. The road leaves the small settlement of De Flucht at an altitude of 289 meters at the Kirbums River. It's well worth spending some time at De Flucht. Here you can visit the historical post office as well as the old school. Thomas Bain's original old house, which is now 150 years old, can be rented in De Flucht. It features the original yellow wood floors, no electricity and a lovely old agar stove, all of which will get you into a relaxed frame of mind in this beautiful valley of the Kirbums River. The entire valley now falls within the boundaries of the 50,000 hectare Kirbums Conservancy Corridor. Modern road builder Graham Ross has the following to say about this pass. Once clear of the southern forest area, there is a section of rolling farmland before the true pass section commences, about 50 kilometers from the start. Bain moved himself and his workforce to De Flucht, where the new road springs away from the easier gradients of the old wagon route up the Klein Langkloof to claw its way up over the rocky slopes to Afontir. Bain reported in his journal, the work is as formidable and near the waterfalls more formidable than any road yet undertaken in the colony and the cost will be very heavy. Considerable blasting was required, stone retaining walls, some more than 16 meters high were the order of the day and substantial fills were needed to ease the curvature in some of the side valleys. It is around this next bend in the road where you will find a small memorial plaque erected in honor of Thomas Bain. The inscription reads, To honor the memory of Thomas Charles John Bain, 1830 to 1893, to whose dedication and skill as a road engineer, the people of South Africa owe this fine mountain pass and several others in the Cape. Throughout the northern section of the pass, the road can be narrow and passing oncoming vehicles is always a problem. The pass rises steadily up to a point called Diprefier Hoogte, where there are beautiful views of the valley below. Bain used stinkwood beams set in grooves in the solid rock to support his bridges. In 1930, the stinkwood beams, having served for over 40 years, were replaced with concrete sections. The work was sufficiently advanced for the postcard to use the new route from September 1866 and May of the next year saw the completion of the pass. Prince Alfred, the second son of Queen Victoria, visited the Cape Colony in 1867 and in September of that year he was hosted on an elephant hunt in the pass region. Having killed an elephant, he graciously gave permission for the pass to be named after him and at the official opening on the 29th of September 1868, the work was named Prince Alfred's Pass. Suitable photographs were taken and forwarded to His Royal Highness. There are long sections of this road which have potholes and can be corrugated depending on the time of year and the amount of rainfall. Take your time, enjoy the pass and drive slowly.
along the southern section from Biffles Neck towards Neisner, you can see the Feltman's Putt historical woodcutter cottages as well as the King Edward Big Tree. Other interesting spots to stop are the Buckeyes Dry historical buildings as well as the Easterhoek convicts campsite.